I always told myself I would never be the pot type of politician that will hustle people. For 19 years, Jeffrey Boyd served as the alderman of the city's 22nd ward. I thought this would be a great opportunity for the city of St. Louis. Now, I sit here today looking like a corrupt politician, somebody I despised that I said would never be me. Vacant buildings and lots dominate much of this corner of North St. Louis. But patches of new developments Boyd takes pride in also dot the landscape, including the banquet hall he built inside an abandoned vacant building. If you're going to do work in my ward, I'm going to be a champion for you as an alderman. So in July of 2020, when fellow alderman John Collins Muhammad introduced Boyd to a man who wanted to build in Boyd's ward, he jumped at the chance. It was a time in his life when he says he was dealing with some demons. Something that had happened to me when I was 19 years old in the military that I just never talked about, I never got help for. He used alcohol to self-medicate. I drank a fifth of tequila every day, every day. He says he was often under the influence when he met with Muhammad al mutin that businessman Collins Muhammad introduced him to. I was in pain. Mentally, I was not thinking enough about what was going on around me because of what was going on inside of me. Soon, he started committing insurance fraud, filing claims for damaged vehicles Al Mutin fixed for him for free. I own that. I own that. I just wasn't thinking. And I'm sorry again for that. Then he started accepting cash from Al Mutin. He says it happened after he sent letters recommending the city accept Al Mutin's offers on blighted property in his ward. What were you thinking? I was thinking he's just helping me out with the car business and just being nice. You know, I never thought uh, again that it was like a bribe. Did you ask him for money? Absolutely not. When I keep telling everybody, I never asked for anything. I didn't want it. They say, yeah, Jeffrey, we know, but you took the money. Why did you take the money? I kind of felt like I was insulting him if I didn't, because he kept saying, it's OK, it's OK, you know, here, here, here. And Don't worry about it. It's OK, Mo. Trust me. Any constituent before this that had proposed any of the, all of the things you're so proud of in this community ever offered you money before? Yeah. I mean, was this common? I have had meetings with people and they have said, man, I just think you're a great guy and if you can just help me out with this and I would be like, no, I'd be more than happy to help you. You don't have to do that. The I team obtained FBI surveillance footage of some of those meetings with Al Mutin. Boyd says they show what he did was not a quid pro quo. The government disagrees. I never asked a man for a dime and had I been in right, my right frame of mind, it just would have never happened. The feds say they had probable cause to investigate Boyd. What kind of evidence is there that would give them the idea that you would be a target in this investigation? I have never in my life given people a reason. I didn't know anything about John getting paid to bring him to me. I didn't know anything about Lewis. I, John and Lewis surprised, especially Lewis. On the day we were indicted, I, I had no clue. And then I read and it says I was part of a criminal enterprise. How? The feds say Jeffrey Boyd took about $9,500 in cash from Al Mutin. He was sentenced to 36 months in prison and it's a sentence he'll start serving this week. Please don't forget all the good things I did for my community. And all I can promise everybody is when this is behind me, I would do better. The U.S. Attorney's Office sent a statement to the I-Team saying the dealings Boyd had with the informant were quid pro quos. To read the examples the government gave, as well as listen to extended clips from our interview with Boyd, go to KSDK.com. For the I-Team, Christine Byers, five on your side.